यथाग्नेर्दाहिका शक्ति रामकृष्णे स्थिता हिया सर्वद्यास्वूपारणमाम्यहम परतत्वे सदालीनो रामकृष्ण सनया यो धर्मस्थापन रो वीरेश तम नमाम्यहम कालिंदी फुल्लकमले माधवेन क्रीडारता ब्रह्मानंद नमस्तुभ्यं सद्गुरोकनायक योगानंद प्रेमानंदे वैये च पार्षदा रामकृष्णगत प्राण सर्वान्स्ता प्रणमाम्यहम Sometime in May 1901 Swamiji was visiting Dhaka and there he had a severe attack of asthma He was hugging a pillow to his chest unable to breathe and he himself tells he thought that was the end He rested his head on his pillow and he was watching to see how the life would go But from inside he heard this so hum so hum spontaneously come out and very soon he recovered but when he was in the fit of that asthma attack and even those who were around him thought maybe this is the end he made a comment a remark as if to himself he said what does it matter i have given them enough for 1500 years what does it matter i have given them enough for 1500 years what does it matter evidently it is with reference to his life's mission which his guru sri ramakrishna had given him and which was the spiritual evolution of mankind so he knew he had set in motion a machinery a thought flow a current of feelings and thoughts across india and in the west which would slowly but surely uplift mankind in its journey towards divinity so he said what does it matter i have achieved that now the second point is very important to note he says i have given them enough for 1500 years what this means is that it will take us generations and generations centuries to fully work out all the ideas that swami ji has given us this is the point we should keep in mind i have given them enough for 1500 years so generation after generation of devotees and sadhus will have to work out his ideas apply it to the society of their own times this is the challenge swami ji has given us swami ji's message is rooted in vedanta that is upanishads and therefore it will continue to inspire individuals and societies for next 1500 years after that swami ji himself said a new wave something more suitable to that time will come the same divinity will manifest again and give a message suitable for those times and until then swami ji's message will resonate across this world helping individuals to realize their divinity and their oneness with this world this is going to happen and swami ji says i have seen this happening so that again means each one of us we have this responsibility we who call ourselves admirers and followers of thakur ma swami ji we have this responsibility to engage with their ideas every day our predecessors they interpreted it and they lived it out now it is our turn to be guided by their interpretation but to also take it upon ourselves the responsibility to interpret it as it suits the modern needs the key note of swami ji's message is evident it is religious awakening of india 
because Swamiji said religion is the backbone of India. If you take care of the backbone, everything else will be set right. That was his repeated message. It is the life breath of India, religion. So he gave a clear picture of how and why India had degenerated. Graphic description, neglect of the masses, oppression of the masses, ill treatment of women. So like this he pointed out a number of causes and he told the remedy is not in removing all these causes but in strengthening our Naru current, our backbone, our life current that is religion. So Samaji declares, we can become great if only we begin to work in right earnest on behalf of our religion. And whenever Swamiji talks about religion, it is the essence of religion, spirituality, practical Vedanta that he refers to. Because there is a difference of heaven and earth between what we understand, commonly understand by the term religion and what spirituality stands for. Now this religious revival or spiritual revolution or evolution that Swamiji wanted has two dimensions to it. The first is to awaken the divinity within us. Each one of us, we have this challenge to awaken our divinity. Awaken our divinity means to awaken to the divinity. I am now aware of and I work with and I am conscious of my body, my mind and ego. Divinity is that pure awareness behind this and all the spiritual sadhanas are to discover that source, my true nature, my Nijaswarupa. And this our Ramakrishna order tells us can and should be done by the harmonious practice of Raja Yoga, Gnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga and Karma Yoga. Sri Ramakrishna did not like one-sidedness, so we practice all the four yogas. Of course, each one of us will have a natural bent, an inclination towards one or two of these yogas that is left to our independent individual capabilities and aptitudes. And the Ramakrishna order itself has this Gnana Mishrita Bhakti as its path. This is the first aspect of the religious revival that Swamiji wanted. The second aspect is very interesting and to the point of this talk, which is to serve the Virat. Virat is this manifest universe. So Swamiji says, serve all those around you. And he declares, the first gods we have to worship are our own countrymen. If you think worshipping your Shiva or whichever form of God in the temple is the highest form of worship, you are mistaken. That is only elementary worship. Higher worship is seeing the same God in people around you and worshipping them. And that worship will be in the form of service. Shiva Jnane Jiva Seva is the Bhava. So this is the second aspect of religious revival that Swamiji advocated. Another keynote of Swamiji's work was a sense of do it now, a sense of urgency. This is similar to Vyakulata that Sri Ramakrishna often spoke about. It has to be done now, not today, it has to be done now. That's a kind of an urgency. And he had that in him. Therefore, in less than nine years, he was a public figure for just less, less than nine years. He finished his work. He packed his work in those nine years. Superhuman efforts he put and he achieved his life's mission. And he wanted us to do the same. This in connection with the idea of serving the Virat. How do we serve the Virat? Physical help is one level. Intellectual knowledge giving is uh, another level. And the highest is giving spiritual knowledge. This Swamiji explains in his Karma Yoga. So the best service to the Virat, the manifest universe, people around me, men and women, the best service I can give them is to spread, is to give them spiritual knowledge. Therefore, Swamiji says, carry the light 
and the life of the Vedanta to every door and rouse up the divinity that is hidden within every soul. This was his constant call. You have to go around awakening the same God which is inside you and inside them. Awaken it inside you, awaken it in those around you. This was his call. And for this, Swamiji wanted the youth because youth are flexible, energetic, daring, full of hope and energy, never say die spirit. So Swamiji had great hope on the youth of India. So he wanted this youth to march from one corner of the earth to the other, preaching and teaching the eternal spiritual truths of Sanatana Dharma. Go from one corner of the earth to the other, preaching, teaching the eternal truths of Sanatana Dharma. This was Swami Vivekananda's call. Interestingly, Swami Brahmanandji gave Sanyasa Diksha to Swami Etishwaranandji. And that night, they all had gathered. Etishwaranandji writes this. They were all expecting Maharaj will talk something very high about Sanyasa, ideals, practices. But that night, Brahmanandji was in a very high state of mind and in a divine mood. And in that mood, he told Yatishwaranandji Maharaj, What spiritual practice will you do? Go from door to door and let people listen to the holy name of God. That in itself is a great sadhana. Go from door to door and spread the name of the Lord. That is a great sadhana. You do your japam, you do your meditation, do your bhajans, read your scriptures. Along with that, serve the Virat. And that service, the highest service is spreading spiritual knowledge. And how will you do that? Brahmanandji says, go from door to door and let people listen to the holy name of God. That itself is a great sadhana. Then, turning to Swami Sharvanandji, who was then the head of the center, Madras center, Raja Maharaj says, These days, I very much admire, appreciate the attitude of Sri Ramanujacharya, helping everybody hear the name of God. A great social service, a great form of worshipping the Virat. Now, this spreading the name of Bhagavan, the Lord, is part of our culture and we see that in practices like Nagar Sankirtan, Harikatha, Pravachan in the temples. For centuries we have been doing this. Spread the name of the Lord across the city, across the town, across the village. It is part of our culture. This year, 2022, is the 125th anniversary of Ramakrishna Mission. Swami Vivekananda established it on 1st May 1897 at Calcutta. The meeting was held at Balram Babu's house. So this is the 125th anniversary of that establishment of the Ramakrishna mission. Simultaneously, it is also the 125th anniversary of the establishment of Sri Ramakrishna Mat Chennai. Not formally, but we take Swami Ramakrishnananji coming to Madras and settling at Castle Karnan as the beginning of Sri Ramakrishna Mat. So in that way, this is also the 125th anniversary of Sri Ramakrishna Mat Chennai. Then, it is also the 125th anniversary of Swami Vivekanandji's lectures. Lectures that he delivered from Colombo to Almora, Lahore. And in Madras, he gave the stirring call to the nation. This is the 125th anniversary of his visit to India. He came in 1897. That was his first return from the West. He went again second time to the West. But when he returned, he went straight to Calcutta. His first return from the West, he came to Colombo. And from there we know it was a royal reception. He finally came to Madras on 6th February 1897. And the whole country was excited. There is one mention. Nishchayananda later, a disciple of Swamiji, he is rushing to see Swami Vivekananda and he sees the fisherman's colony all lighted up. He is a Marathi. He was working in the British Raj army. 
he asks them what is the festival you have written all these lamps here and they tell him don't you know the jagat guru has returned so from king the raja of ramnad and other kings to the fisherman everyone was excited and they were eager to welcome this hero the patriot saint of india that was 125 years ago this is the anniversary of that occasion and swami ji stayed for 9 days at castle karnan now it is called vivekananda illam on the marina beach road and every year we celebrate these 9 days as navaratri this year too we will be celebrating it how can we as admirers and devotees of swami ji help in spreading the message of vedanta we have seen he wanted us to go door to door spread the message of vedanta our publications lectures like this and satsangs prayers festivals in our temples and small functions conducted across the city these are all efforts to spread the message of vedanta but today we are living in the digital world where people sit at home and are in touch with the whole world so we also have to get into the digital world which we are doing in our own way the ramakrishna order almost every center has its own website and we are also able to come out with some social media content which is spread on the social media platforms so one way admirers of swami ji devotees of swami ji takur ma swami ji can help in this 125th anniversary celebration is to spread their message and this can be done in many ways we can individually or in small groups reach out to all the households in our own road and adjacent two roads if each devotee does this so many new people will come to know about the message the vedantic message of sri ramakrishna holy mother sharada devi and swami vivekananda i have benefited from it and it should be my responsibility to introduce it to my neighbors so can we not buy some books we have new publications for this 125th anniversary highly subsidized the lectures that swami vivekananda delivered in madras they have been published both in tamil and in english and highly subsidized can we not buy those books or maybe some small pocket books we have so many of them reach out to our neighbors in our road next road on both the sides just introduce them to the message of vedanta this need not be done immediately when the covid is there but we are talking about a whole year celebration and we can invite these people to the math many times it is seen people are hesitant to come because they don't know whether they will be asked about their caste or community uh, as it is done in other places but those who come once they know this is a universal temple anyone can come and sit and pray to the lord so we can invite our friends our relatives our neighbors to visit the mat once in this year of 125th anniversary celebration we can conduct satsangs in their homes it is already been done by many devotees but if every devotee takes this up in this 125th anniversary year we will together or individually or devotees from our locality we will take it upon ourselves to conduct such satsangs maybe 125 satsangs across our locality in the city or in the villages that will be one real effort to spread the name of the lord and now we are familiar with these social media platforms how every day we receive so many messages wonderful messages some of them and some of them false and some of them not not good quality but we have gems in the literature of ramakrishna vivekananda vedanta so one thing we could do is to type out small messages vani of thakur ma swami ji or direct disciples and share it every morning with our friends and relatives if each devotee admirer of swami ji does this and shares it with all his contacts every day that message will go out and we never know that it may transform someone's life it has that power 
it is a voice without form there is this example of anna hazare the well known social activist he was writing his suicide letter sitting in a train at the delhi railway station and accidentally he happened to see a small booklet in that bookshop on the platform he went and purchased it it was a small booklet containing the quotes of swami vivekananda in that he read one famous quote which swami vivekananda wrote in 1895 from america to the maharaja of mysore the wadayar where he wrote my noble prince they alone live who live for others the rest are more dead than alive they alone live who live for others the rest are more dead than alive this one sentence changed his life he decided i wanted to commit suicide okay this moment onwards i die to myself but i live for my village that was a tremendous decision i live for my village from now i am dead to my own personal comforts and needs selfishness is dead and we know he revolutionized he transformed that village and there was a movement some years ago when the whole country was supporting him now one statement of swami ji can change a life there is so many people who have been touched by it and as admirers and devotees all we can do is be benefited first and simultaneously reach out this this amruta ganga to all the people we know friends and relatives so we can type out these messages quotes or we can take a photo snap of that and share it on whatsapp our facebook or telegram whatever social media apps we have we can share it there is one more activity which can be done which requires a little more serious participation and it probably will require a coming together of at least two or three people this is creating one vivekananda reading club there are so many admirers who really respect and even worship swami vivekananda but have not found time to read his literature even close devotees they have not found time to read swami vivekananda books have been purchased even at discount on tithi puja days and kept in the showcase so starting on vivekananda reading club will be a way forward how this can be done it can be done like this people can be invited to join this vivekananda reading room or reading club and they should, once they join let us say 50 people join they can be divided into five groups of 10 each and every morning the one who is running this who is coordinating this he should select portions from the text which will take 15 minutes to read at a normal speed and ask all these members to read that portion for that day for 15 minutes that's the point every day 15 minutes you will read vivekananda literature and as this is the 125th anniversary of his talks here in madras colombo to almora we can begin with that book from colombo to almora it is available in almost all languages we can ask the group members to read the selected portion just for 15 minutes and whoever is heading this conducting it he or she should send out one question in the morning related to that section not like a school question what is the name where did it go not to find out the facts it should be an open question which provokes the readers to think but somehow connected with the text or matter read for that 15 minutes that day so early morning if we send out this 15 minutes worth or uh, uh, content which will take 15 minutes to read with a question and ask the readers to answer that before they go to bed a kind of uh, commitment is brought into this i was they may think they will read and they may have read maybe 5 minutes but if they have to answer that question they have to read the whole thing and they have to answer it before going to bed that night so every day they get into the habit of reading for 15 minutes and this is a very powerful thing one of our senior swamis he used to tell us if you wish to master anything practice it for 15 minutes every day 
and in three years you will be a master in it. There is a great psychological truth behind this. So we could do this. Request our friends, our relatives, and just send out a general message. Three or four of us come together and we say, we are having a reading club. Please join us. And every day, just 15 minutes, any time from morning 6 o'clock to you are going to bed at 10 p.m. Between that, so many hours you have, 15 minutes you keep for reading Vivekananda. And we read together. Every day, the content is given to you and a question is sent to you. You will just send back your reply, whatever is the social media platform that is being used. And once a week or when that first lecture is over, the coordinator can invite a Swami or someone who is well read in Swamiji literature and ask for a discussion of that talk, of that lecture of Swami Vivekananda. This way, within this year, we will be able to finish Colombo to Almora. At least that challenge we should take up. And then, when we read each of these lectures, it is not simply to understand what Swamiji said, because whatever Swamiji said, it has a practical purpose, a practical end to it. He was not theoretical. Practical Vedanta was his message. So he never leaves us empty-handed. He always gives us some task. We come back with a to-do task. So that lecture, every lecture will have that. It is only our duty, our effort to find out what is it that Swamiji is asking us to do in this lecture. If we can identify that and work it out in our lives, and help others to work it out. That will be the spiritual regeneration of Sanatana Dharma. And that will be spreading Swamiji's message across this world. So let these words of Swami Vivekananda keep ringing in our ears. Off with laziness. Spread, spread. Run like fire to all places. Let us use the power of social media to run like spread, to run like fire and spread Swamiji's message across the world. Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu.